Hi, uh, welcome to session 9 and uh, in this session we are looking at uh, population growth, urbanization and migration. Uh, yeah, so we will look at um, uh, some of the theories related to population growth and uh, the status of population growth in the, in the world. Um, and then look at some of the factors influencing population growth and then some of the implications of population growth and uh, of course um, you know, some of which uh, is urban migration and of course urbanization so um, yeah, to begin with uh, of course when you talk about population we are referring to um, uh, uh, demography so we are referring to demographic studies um, uh, and, and demography uh, in itself has uh, uh, it, it's the, the statistical study of, of uh, human population and uh, of course it, it deals with uh, studying about um, uh, size uh, population structures population distribution uh, spatial and temporal changes in would be in terms of migration and so on and therefore uh, again uh, in response to, to uh, birth uh, death migration and and aging uh, so looking at the differences between the, the old and, and, and the young uh, so that is a specific de de demography um, so of course the trends have been changing uh, over time and the population is rapidly increasing uh, as you've, uh, you you by 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 mid previous century the population had uh, doubled uh, uh, the, the population that was there before and uh, of course uh, during the 20th century alone the population in the world has uh, I mean, just uh, uh, grown from uh, 1.65 billion to 6 billion. And um, again, uh, because of the declining growth rates, it is projected to take over in about the next 200 years or, or, or so. So uh, the, the trends are a little bit um, uh, are, are indeed um, uh, uh, shocking, uh, but also somehow uh, surprisingly um, true so we have uh, um, previous current uh, previous and current trends and some uh, future projections of course uh, um, if you visit the the, the website uh, by wordometer uh, 2021 you could um, for each second uh, look at how many people are being added uh, across the world but of course Again, uh, that is just data that is um, uh, added into uh, the systems um, automatically. Or, but but there are other um, uh, uh, births uh, that are happening all over the world somewhere um, in rural areas or other dropping countries, um, and that data has not been captured uh, regarding uh, the people that are being born. So. Uh, definitely the population is more than what uh, uh, we know so far so but just to to give a recap of the trends um, of the previous current and the future projection so you have around 1804 um, uh, you had we had 1 billion uh, globally And then uh, uh, by uh, 1930, so you can see almost an entire century uh, before uh, the population grew to a, a billion. Um, so by 1930, you had uh, uh, two. You have two billion. Uh, 1960, three billion. Uh, 1974, uh, four billion. Um, 1987, uh, five billion. Um, uh, 1999 uh, 6 billion and uh, 2011 uh, uh, 7 billion and we are currently at 7.8 uh, um, uh, uh, 
billion but of course uh, the projection is that uh, by end of, of 2021 we should be uh, drawing closer to uh, 7.9 uh, billion so by 2023 it is expected that the population would have grown by uh, uh, I, mean, I mean to 8 billion and uh, by 2037 to 9 billion and then by 2057 uh, 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 20, uh, I mean 10 billion and and then of course uh, all the other projections uh, continue so you can see within the, the previous century uh, beginning from 1930s to uh, uh, in, in, uh, to, to, to around 1999 we have a big um, uh, uh, a rapid population growth in in that case uh, if you look at the the, the, the timeline and trends so population growing fast of course uh, current world population uh, 7.8 plus billions and every every second more than uh, one person more than one person is added uh, and uh, and therefore at every minute ev of every second of every minute we have more uh, people uh, being added um, that are living on, on the group uh, but of course uh, one of the reasons as we are going to see is that um, because of better health services then the population uh, uh, I mean the death rates have, have reduced but of course uh, this information also you could also think about the, the, the population that has been lost by uh, by uh, particular crises such as conflict and uh, crisis health crisis such as the pandemic including covid but again still uh, the population is uh, keeps growing regardless of those um uh, uh, disasters and and and, and crises so you could visit uh, what meter and then you see some of the details of how uh, things are, are indeed changing for uh, for the the I mean at global level but also uh, per country so you can just log in and see how your country is doing or how other countries of your interest are doing um, so of course uh, the projections by uh, Yale University um, uh, looks at the world population would be larger by 2050 and of course with more aging and urbanization um, so you can see uh, there that um, uh, by 1950 you have 2.5 billion by 2027.8 billion so by uh, 2050 uh, the projection is uh, at 9.7 at annual growth rate of uh, uh, 1% by 2020 and um, of course you you can see the annual growth rate uh, keeps reducing as we, we as projections of the next years uh, happen um, and the annual increase uh, has the, the, the annual increase has been um, uh, has grown of course uh, from previous century up to uh, uh, last year uh, but again it will move down as we move uh, towards uh, 2050 um, uh, the, 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 the percentage percent in urban areas you have 30 percent by 1950s but by 2020 we were at 56 but then by 2050 uh, you're seeing more of uh, bigger percentage of of, of uh, more people living in urban centers but of course uh, the, the the fact is yeah of course with the increasing urbanization and growth of cities then you expect more people to live in uh, in cities uh, in that case um, uh, and of course again life expectancy uh, uh, was at 47 in 1950s and it has grown uh, in 1970 yeah I mean uh, 273 by 2020 so by and by 2050 uh, the life expectancy would uh, be at 78 so more people people more people would be living uh, uh, for more years uh, without of course I mean without dying so the death rates uh, would have uh, reduced um, uh, by, by then um, compared to, to the current uh, 
uh, life expect expectancy uh, rate and as you can see for instance the percentage of 65 years and older has uh, grown from 5% to 9% between 1950 to 2020 and uh, by 2050 it is projected that uh, it would have uh, again uh, increased to 16%. So you can see all um, uh, these uh, uh, all these um, uh, projections and previous trends uh, they are showing a picture of uh, a future where we have more uh, people than ever. So um, that is, of course, uh, uh, one uh, developmental issue that must be looked at uh, in, 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 in terms of whether this population growth is good for the planet or, or, or not. Of course, the challenge uh, is that world population is growing fast, as we've seen. Uh, of course, caused by uh, by uh, factors that relate to better medical and treatment of diseases. Uh, for instance, right now, if uh, if the new technologies were not there or the scientists were not well equipped with knowledge and as I mean scientific knowledge, then uh, COVID perhaps would have wipe, wiped out some big percentage of of of, of, of people uh, in in the world. But because of uh, uh, better, quick, and good scientific uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, the, the scientists can be able to, to develop medicine uh, quickly uh, to to uh, to work on on diseases, and therefore that itself um, uh, helps in controlling population. Uh, I mean death rates, uh, and therefore uh, maintaining or increasing population growth. Uh, and of course, also the population growth is brought about by uh, better access to health care services and also better sanitation and hygiene uh, that otherwise, if they were not there, then would have more waterborne diseases or other diseases such as cholera that would kill uh, many people uh, faster. But because of better hygiene and, and sanitation, then you have, you, you maintain a healthy population and therefore keeps growing. And then also better diet and food supply that caters for uh, the ever-growing uh, population. So we have some theories uh, that look at uh, population growth. Um, yeah, in the pre-modern societies, population growth was quite low until uh, the 18th century, just uh, as we, we, we just saw in the previous uh, statistics and trends. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, marked with high uh, birth rates, uh, of course there was also overall balance between births and, and death rates and uh, marked uh, uh, increase in uh, population was uh, followed by an increase in death rates. Um, and of course emergence of industrialization and science with increased standards of living, scarce of resources was uh, projected, therefore population would be affected. So we have first the Mar uh, first we have the Malthusian theory of population, and um, uh, in nineteen uh, in seventeen ninety eight, Malthus, uh, well, a clergy a clergyman and uh, an economist, published an essay on the principle of population, and um, uh, debated about the connection between, uh, of course, uh, population and food resources. And uh, his principle it was uh, that food and, and procreation, procreation in terms of, of course, uh, birth rates or uh, reproduction, uh, food and procreation um, would uh, necessary, uh, were nece necessary for uh, con con continuation of life. So uh, food and uh, uh, production of, of, of uh, goods and services uh, therefore leads to uh, to, to uh, uh, they, they were necessary for continuation of, of, of life uh, and uh, necessity of food uh, for human survival is to is to continue and therefore similarly um, the, the passions between sex are to continue and uh, of course both uh, natural necessities for life. So they need to have to eat and, and have food, but also they need to, to have sex. Those two uh, 
contribute uh, contribute are essential contributing factors to uh, population growth but uh, while the two uh, uh, necessities natural necessities uh, the two factors uh, of human life uh, uh, grow at different rates so for him he he indeed uh, theorized that uh, population increases ge geomet geometrically uh, or in a multiplicative way um, so two times eight times uh, so we have two uh, four or eight or sixteen um, thirty two and then so on uh, but to him food uh, supply uh, increases arithmetically or in ad additive way um, so one plus two plus plus one three plus one four uh, and, and and so on so in other words uh, in simple terms you you'll have more more people ex, uh, growing more than uh, food production itself and so uh, this is the representation of, of, of the graph uh, so you have uh, food production which is uh, which grows um, um, arithmetically and then you have uh, operation which grows uh, geometrically or in a multiplicative way that a certain phase um, would be reached where uh, you have um, uh, wo what he called the Malthusian uh, catastrophe where population would uh, outgrow food production and therefore you have cases of uh, uh, war famine and diseases uh, that result from um, uh, that excess of of of, uh, uh, of population and versus limited production of 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 of, of, uh, of food so this is where the mm, the the Malthian catastrophe um, happens of course this is compared with time in that case okay so population that population will according to him population would even inevitably uh, exceed food supply and population size always pushes against the limits of food supply in to support the population and therefore population was expected to double every 25 years um, uh, and so human beings would adopt measures to check uh, the growth of uh, uh, population. So the checking, we are going to look at both negative and positive checks uh, in a moment. And uh, here we are. So Martha, uh, Martha, Martha's uh, proposed uh, uh, two ways of uh, population checks. So one is preventive check, which is a negative. Um, and, and, and he recommended, for instance, people uh, following uh, so the checks are in terms of population control if i may put it in a simpler way so he proposes that uh, uh, people who could follow syllabus in other words not get married uh, but of course one criticism is that case if he was to be around right now he'd, he would he would uh, uh, note that actually most people indeed are uh, uh, are single parents and they have many children uh, without getting married um, you know, that they should also marry it uh, but of course again it doesn't matter that uh, uh, abstinence from uh, entering into sexual unions would result in two uh, uh, less population because uh, abstinence would would result in into uh, absence from entering into sexual unions uh, would uh, would result in two less um, uh, uh, less aspects of, of, of procreation so that's what he proposes here so you have the negative checks um, whereby you have uh, food there uh, instead of getting the catastrophe then population is controlled uh, controlled and then you have more food still uh, that can support the population that is growing uh, but 
then he said that if human beings do not adopt to the, to the preventive checks, then positive checks come into operation in form of famine, uh, epidemic, uh, war, and other natural calamities that would then uh, wipe up out or help in controlling population in a, a natural uh, manner. And, and therefore, that's why you have uh, where this is population go, grows beyond uh, the food production. And then uh, because they have this uh, food to cater for their survival, then people die, uh, calamities and so on, or competition of, 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 of resources and food. And then people start fighting. And then you have also hunger and famine. And then people die. And then the population goes down again. And then uh, it grows again because of other factors that had helped it to get to this uh, phase. And therefore, it continues to do uh, like that. So those are the positive checks that um, uh, Martha's uh, proposes. So the positive checks can come into uh, operation at the stage when population exceeds uh, food supply. And uh, that is what we have just called the Malthusian catastrophe. So when population is wiped out by, uh, by the positive checks, then the food supply uh, for the remaining population may be sufficient again, uh, though it may be temporary. And then again, the, the catastrophe might happen with, again, um, a population that grows. So that's uh, his uh, theory. So, um, but of course, his theory has been uh, criticized uh, that it did not visualize the power of science and technology. So, in other words, the technocentric view of propent, which can be based, uh, can be used to produce more and enough food, uh, considering the fact that, for instance, Canada or Germany or other countries are, are using such uh, such measures to, to, to produce more food that uh, would sufficiently cater for the, the ever-growing population. Okay, so for instance, you take an example, now we have urban farming where someone can just uh, cultivate all sorts of food, uh, all, all sorts of food in a small piece of land uh, and then be able to feed uh, quite a big number of people. So that's the technology that Martha uh, did not visualize. The theory is also, uh, of course, um, uh, criticized for not advocating for use of uh, contraceptives as uh, a preventive measure. Uh, though uh, we are available in his time, in his times, or perhaps because of his clergy status, uh, perhaps he, he, he ignored that because I mean, you know some of the, the implications of religion, uh, religious beliefs on our on our thinking and worldviews. So could be that, of course, he did not think about the contraceptive as pre preventive measure or um, a negative check. Um, so another criticism has to do with uh, um, that the theory uh, presents a, a pessimistic picture of population growth, pessimistic. Uh, that in terms of uh, a negative way, a negative way of presenting population growth, that for instance, most technologically advanced countries did not follow uh, his predictions and therefore uh, somehow doing well without even uh, to have followed uh, those uh, theories. Then in 1965, we had uh, two arguments uh, from Bozap. Uh, Bo Boss Raps, uh, Esther, 1910 uh, to 1999, wrote in her book, uh, The Conditions of Agricultural Growth and the Economics of African Change Under Population Pressure, that population levels determine agricultural methods rather than the uh, agricultural methods determining population. So, in other words, via food supply. So, uh, Boss Rap, um uh, says that food supply would increase to accommodate population growth. Therefore, an argument that is against uh, what Marcidian was was looking at. So, uh, in her argument, she says that, uh, of course, her, as population as population um, um, as the population found that they were approaching food shortages, they would 
identify ways of increasing supply, uh, whether through new technology or better seeds or new farming methods. Uh, and of course, uh, that is what is happening. For instance, we have more uh, methods of food production to cater for the, the ever-growing uh, population in, in, most, in most countries. Um, and uh, for purposes of agricultural production and of course economic uh, purposes so in the graph you can see that um, uh, food supply will increase uh, with uh, increase in population okay uh, so you, you can see it here that um, uh, if we 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 graphically represent uh, Borsap's theory and argument you see food production <coughs> grows as population grows so people instead of having population go beyond food supply as Martha has suggested had suggested uh, as population grows uh, food uh, they tend to look for other ways of making sure that there is enough food to cater for the ever growing population so in that case food supply continues uh, to grow without having population uh, how to grow uh, food supply with time, of course. Okay. So, Borzarab's uh, 1965 argument, uh, stay, uh, of course, looks at the, the idea that as the population approaches the limit of the food supply, uh, that food supply, in, food supply increases as new technology improves uh, the yields. Uh, think about our, our nads, um, uh, kind of food that has over and over replaced uh, our organic uh, production of food and uh, food uh, and supply. Of course, that's the technology that uh, she's referring to. Uh, okay, so uh, away from uh, uh, Bozap and Martha's theories, uh, we have the demographic transition theory. So the demographic transition theory uh, links birth rates and death rates to a society's level of industrialization and, and therefore uh, illustrates a shift from uh, predominantly agriculture to, um, uh, to predominantly industrial and large-scale manufacturing base. So remember, for instance, what we've talked about during uh, the session on work uh, and, and, and life, economic work and economic life, uh, where we've talked about the different economies uh, uh, from primary to secondary to tertiary and, and postmodern. So, uh, in, in, the, in the argument, it is that uh, uh, the, 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 the you have high uh, birth rates and um, uh, high uh, death rates in uh, in undeveloped in undeveloped uh, countries or societies, and and of course with that uh, you have uh, population um, uh, the population begins stays um, constant because of uh, uh, high birth rate and high death rates, so the population somehow seeming to seemingly looks uh, uh, constant or does not rapidly grow. Uh, so that that characteristic is uh, within the, the pre-development or the traditional uh, or developing countries. So as um, time goes on uh, towards, uh, social, towards moving towards developing or developed countries or developed societies, then you have high birth rates um, uh, you have uh, high birth rates uh, and falling death rates because uh, as we keep developing new technology comes up and scientific knowledge is advanced and therefore um, uh, better measures to control death are being implemented and therefore allowing um, uh, allow, we, we keep having high birth rates as death rates uh, decrease. Um, then uh, as we keep more advancing towards uh, developed societies or developing countries, uh, then you have uh, more, again, uh, birth rates also begin to, to decrease as um, uh, 
measures of, of population control uh, uh, are, are used. Um, again, regarding uh, easy access of, of, of health services that would necessitate uh, birth control. And uh, yeah, as we move towards, um, uh, of course, uh, as we, of course the, the population would keep uh, growing so as we move towards uh, developed countries then you have uh, low birth rates and low death rates but of course uh, that would as well uh, influence uh, a low growth population growth so th that is basically how the demographic transition um, uh, is uh, i mean expresses the the nature of population growth so perhaps we could take a look at more uh, details uh, few other details on each of the four stages uh, uh, stage one two and three so in stage one um, you have um, uh, the pre-industrial uh, the pre-industrial or pre uh, developed societies uh, where population size remains fairly stable and you have high rate high high birth rates uh, that are balanced with uh, high death rates and at this stage of transition uh, is characteristic of the less um, industrialized nations or less developed countries under stage two you have death rates that are falling because of improved sanitation hygiene and medical conditions and then you have birth rates that remain high because the continued um, influence of traditional values or culture favoring large families or extended families um, uh, or preference of particular uh, child sex uh, such as uh, um, boys in some cultures uh, for instance think about uh, India and other uh, countries and then you have the balance uh, between death and birth rate that results from high population growth and of course that's the characteristic of most uh, uh, developing nations at stage three of transition you have traditional values that give with modern values and therefore now our traditional uh, families such as in african traditional families we start adopting uh, uh, or cultural diffusions come in now and then you, you have families that would now shift from uh, believing in extended families and then they try to shift towards uh, nuclear families. Okay, uh, so therefore favoring that uh, the use of contraceptives uh, to reduce uh, childbirth. Or, okay, then you have birth rates in that case after uh, such uh, uh, cultural diffusion and use of contraceptives to control birth, then um, birth rates decline as a result of 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 of, of, of uh, later age at marriage, also urbanization uh, where people would shift from uh, rural areas to urban centers to concentrate on work rather than concentrate on family. You have industrialization, people working uh, for to earn a living, and of course characterized with capitalistic tendencies rather than socialism. And then you have rising aspiration where people are more concentrating on achievement or achieving statuses rather than uh, looking more on ascribed statuses and other factors. So, in other words, mortality rates are, uh, finally stabilize at lower level and then birth rates uh, also follow. Uh, there is also a shift at, in, in stage three, three, there is also a shift from high to low mortality and fertility is known as, of course, demo demographic transition, much related to demographic change or population change. And um, according to the theory, this, for instance, happened in 19th and early uh, 20th century in Europe, North America, and, uh, and among other developed nations. And of course, it is uh, believed that it is just uh, it just started in the middle of 20th century. For most uh, developing countries, that for most developing countries uh, around 50s and 60s, that's when uh, such transition uh, big be began, and therefore people realizing that the importance of of having population control uh, in terms of uh, uh, birth 
control and so on so in the last stage which is post industrial uh, the birth rates um, it is theorized that the birth rates fall uh, to about the same level as mortality and at this stage the equilibrium of, of slow population growth is regained and uh, uh, the pace of demographic change in um, is a in a country varies depending on um, uh, of course culture culture plays a big role uh, regarding the beliefs concerning uh, um, population trends birth and and so on and depending on the level of economic development uh, such as industrialization or urbanization and, and so on and of course other other factors and uh, many developing count countries are in the intermediate stage um, um with falling birth rates and uh, death rates but still with high population uh, uh, you could think of countries such as nigeria uh, and other developing nations of course we have many uh, we have population that is growing a lot uh, is for instance in asia or south america or or in africa itself um, so the transition in most countries has been linked with, uh, for instance, greater education because you have now more women uh, going to school and therefore um, less um, early, early marriage. And then again, education uh, gives more skills to, uh, to people to concentrate on aspiration rather than uh, getting married. Uh, that is why th then you have job opportunities for women um rather than them staying at home to do more of the reproductive roles and then you have a very bit of effective contracep contraception uh which leads to birth control and and so on and then you have a shift from uh, uh a shift away a shift away from uh formal marriage uh, and then the acceptance of, of childbearing outside marriage uh, that you do not need to get married to have a child um, nowadays that is common and of course the rise of individualism um, and materialism which has to do with uh, uh, capitalism and accumulation of, of, of resources and status so all those are part of the characteristics that uh, uh, would necessitate uh, population control to, to, to be reduced but of course, the, the, just as other theories, the, the demographic transition um, uh, has been uh, criticized that although uh, it provides a useful framework for assessing demographic trends, uh, the experts disagree uh, whether all countries will follow the same uh, path or uh, whether there are additional stages of, of the transition not identified in the, in the long term. Uh, population decline so we don't know whether there is more to, to the to the theory or we should just go by what uh, it has provided or whether all countries must go through the same uh, path as uh, uh, it has been theorized so that is one of the criticisms so what could be some of the impacts of population growth uh, so in other words um, uh, does population growth has uh, uh, negative impacts or some implications on development? Of course, yes. Or on social change? Of course, yes. One is that uh, as population growth, there is decreased, uh, decreased availability of food and clothing. So in other words, re reduction in, in attainment of necessities. And therefore, that itself uh, is equated to some high level of poverty or even famine and hunger in some households or in some regions. Then you have decreased per capita uh, food availability despite the phenomenal increase in their production. So that even if there is high level of production uh, uh, of food uh, geared by, by high levels of technology and science, still uh, per person food supply is, would still be limited uh, uh, as population grows. Then uh, decreased per capita GNP and reduced standards of living due to ever-increased population. 
of course the the national status the national development status still uh, is affected by particular population uh, if for instance uh, such population growth does not match with other uh, developments within the different uh, sectors then there is increased pressure on, on resources such as land water natural resources and so on uh, and of course those come with other effects such as uh, uh, fragmentation of labor uh, acute shortage of drinking and irrigation water, deduct, uh, uh, denudation on, of forests, uh, and then of course again population and so on. Uh, I mean pollution of water, uh, land, food, materials and so on. So uh, of course that uh, has an implication on, on, on the health of, of the ever-growing population. One other implication is urbanization uh, uh, beyond a healthy development limit um, uh, where you have this development of slums and uh, increased housing problems uh, within towns and of course increased housing problems come with other issues that do with uh, for instance hygiene and sanitation. Um, uh, then you have urbanization that comes with uh, pollution because of high ve vehicular movements in the cities uh, leading to accidents and pollution. You have serious problems connected with um, waste generation that would lead to hygiene, poor hygiene and sanitation that can also cause uh, result in into health negative health effects. And then you have uh, serious drinking water shortage and then an ending demand for civic enmities such as roads, transport and markets that, for instance, some of the developing countries may not get a fall uh, to control. There are other implications such as unemployment problems, uh, reduced uh, work uh, that is paid, hunger, uh, uh, death rates, uh, acute shortage of, of of medical facilities, then shortage of education facilities, and so on. Other implications could include, uh, of course, increased inflation, uh, increased borrowings from international organization or agencies, reduced health care to mothers, which may lead to high maternal mortality rates and uh, child and infant rate death rates. Then you have increased government expenditure to cater for the ever-growing population and then increased density of population and so on. So there are many uh, different effects that uh, or implications that would that may result from uh, population uh, growth. But of course we are not saying that uh, definitely population growth comes with uh, only negative implications. So you could do more research on uh, the positives of having m more population growth and one of them could be for instance market that you have many uh, people then you have enough market uh, for instance look at China uh, you can use the case of China or again uh, using China uh, as, as a case or India you or other Asian countries you could look at high population uh, in terms of labor supply. So those are some of the positive, the positives that come with uh, high population growth. So, so away from the implications, let's uh, just uh, take one look at uh, rural urban migration as one of the implications of uh, uh, population growth. So with high population growth then uh, combined with the high levels of industrialization and high technological advancement you you have high uh, levels of urbanization so urbanization uh, is associated with physical growth of urban areas as a result of rural urban migration but of course and also uh, even suburban concentration in two cities and therefore leading to migration where people uh, move from uh, rural areas to urban uh, areas. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, migration can be permanent or temporary or voluntarily or forced and can be international or, or national. Uh, that's why you will see, for instance, uh, the UK is um, uh, now more suffering with policy measures to control um, migration 
to control migrants who are coming from South America towards uh, the US. So the US is now uh, more suffering in that case. Uh, of course, there are other uh, categories of, of migration, such as forced migration because of conflicts and so on. So in the previous years, we have had many uh, refugees shifting from uh, uh, the Middle East uh, uh, and Eastern Europe to, uh, towards uh, Western Europe uh, to seek for better uh, standards of living in the developed countries. So some of the causes of urban migration, uh, the, the causes could be push or pull factors and some of the push factors um, uh, that force a person to move could be drought, famine, lack of jobs or overpopulation or civil war or rural resource scarcity and so on. And some of the push, the pull factor, uh, these are based in the areas where people are moving towards. So a chance for better jobs or better education or better standards of living or those or advanced uh, systems such as utilities or land usage or transportation all those can pull individuals from to move from rural areas towards uh, urban areas so think about those other um, uh, factors that would indeed pull or push uh, people from to move from rural areas to uh, to urban areas or those that would shift from uh, push people to, to shift from uh, develop, developing countries to, what, to go to uh, developed countries. Of course, they, 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 again, uh, rural urban migration comes with uh, some of some implications, including uh, increased housing problems in cities, uh, uh, vehicular movement, serious drinking water shortages, and, and so on, as we have uh, looked at them in the previous uh, slides. Uh, there are possible, possible alternatives or solutions to this uh, to rural urban uh, migration. One of them could be rural electrification and industrialization because if you have uh, electricity in, in rural areas then you have, you have created more opportunities for businesses or entrepreneurial uh, uh, opportunities for people to start up their own uh, uh, entrepreneurial businesses. And therefore, instead of going to town, to, to cities to look for such uh, opportunities, then they have them um, within their uh, residential areas, within the rural areas. Then there could be another solution could be development of rural infrastructure, such as roads and markets or transfer of social services such as uh, health services and having better schools uh, in rural areas rather than having uh, these better schools in urban centers or advanced technology in, in agriculture to increase production but also at, uh, draw attention of those who would have wished to go to urban centers to remain in rural areas to engage in, in work and production. Uh, you could also provide relief and rehabilitation to disaster situations and therefore uh, mitigating movement or preventing movement of refugees from the affected areas towards other areas. Uh, you could also have rural security. So there are many possible alternatives that we can, uh, that governments or people can use to, to, to mitigate or prevent uh, such uh, migration uh, patterns. Bottom line is that population growth is even is inevitable. Uh, natural natural resources are ever scarce, but that shouldn't stop people from uh, procreating. And so we need to put measures to control uh, population growth. Uh, if we are scared, or if we are indeed, uh, if we indeed want to minimize the the the, the negative implications of population growth, uh, we we. It is important to, to also put into consideration the impacts of, of rural urban migration uh, because it comes with uh, uh, adverse implications. Uh, so if we control population growth, we preserve uh, resources needed for survival for the current generations, but also for, uh, for future generations. That's why 
the current, um, uh, for instance, the current uh, campaigns are for sustainable development uh, mechanisms or goals to, to, to make sure that at least uh, as we meet, try to meet our, our urgent needs as the current population, then we should preserve resources for the future generations to also benefit from such resources such as water and forests. So therefore, that's the, the, the whole idea of population uh, control. So that marks the end of this session. I hope you've enjoyed it. So thank you.